Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell here in Honolulu, Hawaii at PTC 2020. <clears throat> Joining me today is Ryle Martinek, uh, CEO, of course, of Data Bank. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Let's get right into the questions. I think one of the things we wanted to talk about was the data, of course, a key focus for uh, data bank is secondary markets. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, network neutrality and how that uh, affects those markets? Sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's something uh, we've been focused on in terms of, you know, promoting um, the viability of these markets. Uh, you know, secondary markets are a little different than primary markets in that there's typically only one kind of key interconnection point in those markets. So kind of everything comes back to that location. So I think uh, the importance of kind of network neutral facilities is even more highlighted in these markets. So one of the things we've been focused on in these uh, in our secondary markets is to what extent can data bank help kind of diversify those markets and promote kind of um, a range of options so that uh, users can kind of connect uh, in more than one place to, to create the diversity that they're accustomed to in primary markets. It's, it's, it's rare in a secondary market to have, you know, two, three carrier hotels, but it's obviously something that uh, happens in all the primary markets. So that's where we see kind of data banks role is helping to enhance that ecosystem to make these markets more attractive for kind of, um, you know, users of that infrastructure. And further to that on diversity is a big part of this, as you said, and I know you've you've spoken a little bit about that over the over the past year. Is there anything more you'd like to add on yeah. that? So, you know, obviously, I just talked about the interconnection point, which is about data center. But, um, you know, obviously, we all know that the network piece is just as critical as the data center piece. So you know, similar to the um, kind of the, the lack of options from an interconnection perspective, these secondary markets also many times don't have multiple dark fiber uh, connectivity options. So that's something we started working recently with Zayo Networks, which um, is a company obviously that everyone knows and is now part of the digital bridge family. And it's great to be able to kind of, you know, collaborate with, uh, you know, kind of a fellow portfolio company to combine up our assets and deliver uh, a unique solution in the marketplace that we think is needed to, again, allow these edge markets to, uh, you know, reach the, the level of importance that they, that they should. And you've made uh, recent new enhancements to your customer portal. Uh, can you talk about the benefits of that? Yeah, so the, um, you know, obviously, you know, a portal is kind of a way for us to interact with our customers, um, you know, as a primary method. You know, we inherited our portal through an acquisition of a managed services company a couple of years ago, and they had great uh, visualization around the managed service products, but did not have, um, you know, any kind of the functionality around the co-location side. So over the last 12 months, we've put a lot of energy into kind of being able to expose space, power, even kind of within rack type of uh, visualization for our customers. And we think that that's ultimately what they want. They want to have, you know, control over what they're consuming. They want to have visibility into it, you know, at their option. And we look at it as a, a great win-win because it actually reduces the burden on us to kind of deliver that type of information. So let's talk about the future. So what's your move forward strategy? And I know there's been some, of, of course, talk about the edge and how does that factor in? Sure. So, uh, you know, I've been at Data Bank now for three years uh, when we acquired the business in 2016, three and a half. Uh, you know, we were six data centers in three markets. Uh, today, we're 20 data centers in nine markets. So, you know, I think we'll continue to expand, um, you know, as we see opportunities. When we typically go into a new market, we do it through an acquisition. So it ends up being a little more um, opportunistic than it is uh, predetermined because we can't control kind of, um, you know, acquisitions. But, you know, we think that, you know, markets like Indianapolis, which we added last year, there's still another dozen of those markets in the U.S. where there's, um, you know, there's opportunity from a growth perspective and kind of a competitive landscape where we don't think there's high quality inventory in those markets. So uh, I think you'll continue to see us kind of run the same playbook that we've done over the last couple of years and, and to expand the portfolio in that way. Fantastic. Thank you. We, we look forward to seeing more of that and seeing how this all develops uh, over the next year or two or more. more. Yeah. And so for those of our viewers who don't know, can you tell them where they can go to find out more information? Sure. Uh, databank. And it's a pretty simple databank.com. And that's where everything is. Databank.com. Uh, go there for more information. And thank you so much again for joining thank us. You. Thanks for and thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking.